So this is the resting squat position, and it's not the squat that we're trying to do when we build strength, which is going up and down with the weight. This is more about can I get to the bottom position and can I be resting there? Can I have no extra tension holding me up? So a good place to start is just to find a width that works for you and then to drop your pelvis down between your knees, uh, sorry, between your ankles. There's a couple of reasons usually why people find this challenging and we'll, we'll go over those uh, once we're down in the squat. So find a width that feels good and then dropping down and seeing if you can relax here. And by relax, I mean that I'm not using any extra tension to hold myself here. I'm resting here. I can do something else with my hands. I can talk comfortably. Uh, I can breathe. I'm not creating extra tension. So the couple reasons you might find this challenging is uh, a hip mobility or an ankle mobility. And by mobility, we just mean, do you have flexibility, but can you also be strong with your flexibility? So you might feel like uh, your hips are very flexible when in some resting positions, but this requires a bit more of an active, like a strength flexibility. So the first one for the hips is a seated good morning. We've got another video for that and you can watch that and this will help, but we'll just demonstrate what that means in this context. So as I come up, we're looking that the hips can go forward because when the hips tilt forward, my torso goes forward and it's about having my weight forward of my ankles so that I'm balancing and able to rest there. So as I come down, if my hips are tight, I'm going to start to get that wink. I'm going to start to feel like I can't get my pelvis forward this way and allow myself to be here and relax. Another way to get around that is the prying squat. Um, this is one that was I think, popularized by Pavel in his um, Simple and Sinister book. Using a weight, you rest the elbows and the inside of the knees. Now I'm not actually trying to open my legs more. What I'm trying to do is arch my lower back. So I'm creating that same situation where as my groin gets more flexible, I'm not asking this end to lengthen, I'm asking the pelvic end to lengthen. So as I'm here and I feel like I'm getting deeper, I'm trying to arch my back. And the goal here is that you actually start to do it with less and less weight. And what that means is as you use less weight, you have to use more of your own core and lower back stability. And for a lot of people, that's the reason this will be challenging because they're not able to hold themselves in this very compact position. Other reason you might have difficulty is tight ankles. This is one way to figure out if ankles are part of the situation, but, and this is quite popular for a lot of people to use this as a diagnostic tool, but you're seeing that it actually puts my torso weight forward in my ankles as well. So it's not a great, great way to differentiate it. You're better off coming into that half squat position and actually seeing if your knee can go past your toes. And if it can, with this is less weight. So if it can do that with more weight, you should be able to get more flexibility. So you can see it's not necessarily an ankle issue and it's probably more of a hip issue. So while this might be a nice little workaround to start with and allow you to hang out and rest here for a little while, it's not a good long-term mobility exercise. You're better off doing something like a long, uh, long held calf stretch or some uh, eccentric calf drops to build length through your calf. But your time is going to be best spent doing the hip mobility exercises and just spending cumulative time here. And over time, you'll just get more comfortable here.